So I assembled the first system, which is the TEC12703. So this is the smallest uh, cooler. And uh, just let me explain what you can see here. So this is the thermometer which I built and it contains two thermocouples. And uh, you can see there is a green and there is a white uh, wire. The green wire uh, should uh, touch the hot side, so the, uh, the other side of this uh, heatsink. So it's under uh, here somewhere. So that's the temp 1. And then we have the temp 2, which is the white wire. I show you just to demonstrate. I touch it and it goes up to my body temperature. So this will simply measure the temperature of the air which comes outside. So I just squeeze this in between two uh, fins and uh, that's all. And then we have a third thermocouple which is here. Uh, that's another green wire and it ends up in this. And that will measure the cold side of the uh, thermocouple, uh, thermoelectric cooler. So that's all. And uh, the air from enter from this side. So first it is uh, pushed in uh, by this fan, which I fixed uh, to this uh, CPU cooler by using some rubber bands. And then there is a fan in the middle, which is pushes through the air and the, ent uh, the, the warm air will exit on this side and go towards the other side of the room. Because this side is more free, so the air in this direction can go freely. However, uh, there is a wall very close to this side of the experimental setup. It's like a half a meter. So it doesn't make sense to push the air in that side because it might get trapped and I end up uh, forming up this corner of the room. So it will go towards uh, this direction and that's a very large and open space. And as you can see that the temperatures are pretty much the same everywhere. So we are at room temperature and we can say that the room temperature is roughly 25.6 Celsius uh, degrees Celsius. So that's uh, our, let's say, room temperature equilibrium or however you call it. And now we can basically uh, start the experiment. So what we have here is uh, we have the power supply uh, connected and I just uh, need to start and increase the current. So the first step, what I'm going to do is the 50% uh, test. So I'm going to measure the temperatures at 50% uh, of this uh, current, which is 1.5 amperes. So I'm going to set up the a power supply to 1.5 amperes and I'm just going to wait until I see that the temperature here on the cold side is more or less uh, equalized so it's not changing or just changing very very slowly and I will accept that as a equilibrium temperature for the given room temperature for the given cooling and for the given uh, power so uh, current plus voltage settings and we note down that value and we will uh, continue our experiment. So now I'm just going to increase the voltage and we will see what happens. So I turned on the fan, so I just uh, connected the power supply to it and I started to change the uh, current. Of course, as this thing uh, starts to change its temperature, it will also change uh, its resistance. So the current which is passing through the, let's call it circuit, uh, will change. So I have to do some very small micro adjustments in order to set the voltage to the value where I can see that 1.5 amperes is going through this circuit. And what I can see is now we are 1.49 amperes and uh, 6.3 volts. And I'm actually going to check this 
with a voltmeter because sometimes I discovered that uh, the power supply doesn't show the same as I can measure it with a voltmeter. So here is the voltmeter and I'm just simply tapping the two uh, sides of the uh, clips here. So ground is connected and as I can see here it's uh, 5.8 so that suggests me that maybe the current is also a bit different so I might have to measure that as well so let's check but what we can see now is that we are at minus 8.6 uh, Celsius on the cold side here which is not that bad And I actually don't feel any warm temperatures and you can see that the temperature here is pretty much the room temperature so that's very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure some currents so I have to change the settings. So now this is in a current mode and uh, what I'm going to do is I have to break the circuit so you will see a temperature increase and now I'm going to increase the current again And as you can see that this is only one amperes, which is very low. So let's go to 1.5. So yeah, this is somewhere around 1.5. It's very, very difficult to set it up properly. As you can see, it's a uh, changing so I don't uh, change anything now and uh, it's changing because the temperature is changing here but uh, it seems like that the values on the power supply are a little bit off because the power supply is showing 1.6 amperes but uh, you can see that it's definitely not 1.6 so let's uh, stick with this and uh, as you can see that uh, the temperature here is uh, almost minus 10 degrees and we are still uh, going, uh, so this is very promising that uh, this guy is just uh, running on 1.5 amperes. So at this moment, uh, at roughly 9 volts, we are consuming uh, 27 uh, watts, sorry, half of that, 13.5 uh, uh, watts, and we are at almost minus 11 uh, degrees or we are approaching that value and you can see that uh, neither the hot side nor the uh, outlet air temperature is changing so uh, this is a very good cooler but also we are not uh, pushing too much uh, power through this uh, system now so this is what we get uh, at half of the maximum current so roughly 11, minus 11 uh, degrees uh, Celsius for the cold side temperature. And then as you can see that we are 1.49 uh, amperes. And then the hot side is just barely above the room temperature. So that's quite nice. And let's just uh, measure the voltage just to confirm the value of that as well. So we can... Uh, use that as well so 8.27 uh, watts so I note this down and then we will use this uh, value
So now I'm just going to measure all the other uh, current settings from this uh, temperature and we will see how the curve uh, looks like after uh, measuring several temperatures at several uh, different currents and uh, we will see everything in a better way. So these are the values at uh, roughly 2 amperes, so half amper uh, about the 50% of uh, the performance or the current of this, maximum current. So you can see the temperature is roughly 26, 27 degrees Celsius, minus 17.7 7 degrees Celsius on the cold side without any heat load and good insulation, and 2.08 amperes. So let's just measure the voltage. So let's put this here and put this there. 11.3 amperes, uh, watts, sorry. So this means that uh, at 2 amperes uh, we are roughly at 22 watts of uh, performance or power. So, so this is uh, what we got uh, for 2 amperes. So a lot of time uh, have passed, so let's check the temperatures. So you can see there is a slight increase in the outlet and the hot uh, side temperature, but it's negligible as compared to the room temperature. We have minus 20.6 uh, degrees Celsius, which is quite nice from this, but this just represents the temperature. So this has nothing to do with the uh, capability of transferring heat uh, from some big object. So if you would have been uh, using this to cool down a cup of water or something, then uh, this device uh, would uh, need a lot of time to cool down that to, uh, let's say, zero degrees Celsius. So this is our current here, and let's measure the voltage. So I just have to find the right connections. And 13.45 volts. So I note down everything and now we are ready to increase the current. So actually we are a bit close to the 3 amperes which is the maximum but let's try. So now I go to uh, 3 amperes and we see what will happen. Hopefully I will not destroy this device. So this is 3 amperes, uh, the maximum of this uh, thing. So the time is uh, 32 here, so we are going to wait for 5 minutes or so. So let's come back in 5 minutes. So the 3 minutes waiting time is over and let's check what we have. So as you can see uh, the temperature uh, increased on the hot side of course and the temperature further decreased, which I did not expect here. So we reached the IMAX, which is 3 amperes for this particular uh, device here. And we are balancing between minus 22.8, 22.9. So uh, that's, that's really nice. And uh, let's check what's the uh, voltage. So I will measure that now. Sixteen point one uh, watts. So this is the voltage at this uh, temperature, and uh, this uh, current, and all the other things. So now I'm going to go to the other direction and see uh, what is happening. So this is at one amperes, as you can see. Uh, minus 3.2 degrees Celsius, so not too uh, low temperature, and the outlet temperature is barely, barely about the room temperature. So basically, that is room temperature, and uh, we know everything except the voltage. So let me measure that. 5.76. So let me write that down. 
So now we know this and we will just jump to the next uh, current settings and uh, see what happens. So this is our result for half amperes. So as you can see that the temperature of the cold side is in the positive uh, range. It's plus 7.8 uh, degrees Celsius. And then you can see that the uh, temperature for the hot side and for the outlet uh, temperature is basically the same. So, and that is also very similar to the room temperature. So there is no change because there is barely any uh, power flowing through this circuit so it's essentially not really affecting the this huge uh, fan. Uh, one thing that we need to do is to measure the voltage so I just measure the voltage uh, quickly and uh, see what we get there so 3.04 3.05 uh, So I just note down these values. So once we have all the values uh, for this curve, I will uh, plot the curve and uh, fit a function on it. So we will see what's the minimum temperature. But uh, it seems like that the minimum temperature is actually falling out of the, uh, let's say, boundaries of this device and I'm not going to use this uh, at higher current than 3 amperes because I don't want to destroy it. And after that uh, study I will just basically run this cooler with another cooler which I already showed you. So instead of uh, exposing the cold side to basically just this enclosed chamber I will use this uh, cooler here and put on uh, top of this so it will be on the cold side of the Peltier cooler and uh, I will measure the temperature there so hopefully I can fit this guy there and uh, we will see how cool air we can extract uh, on the other side then I use this on its maximum performance so probably I will run this very close to the uh, 3 amperes uh, current and uh, we will see what's the outlet temperature. So instead of measuring directly the cold side I will measure the outlet temperature of the fan uh, and we will see if this works as an AC and, and so on. So let's see what happens. So we can start the test with the thermal load but before that uh, I want to show you something. So when I try to attach uh, this thing, I discovered that uh, there is a problem. First of all, uh, the foam or insulation was blocking the heat pipes. So I could not uh, reach the surface of the uh, pad here with the surface of this uh, thing. So that was one problem, but also when I remove this uh, foam uh, from this and uh, this side I discovered that the uh, heat pipes are still hitting uh, these edges here so I had to remove some material from there but uh, if I started if I would have uh, started to remove the material by simply grinding it or doing something uh, like cutting or something then uh, the layers of the print would have been falling apart very easily. So what I did, I uh, redesigned this uh, holder by removing some material here and here in the CAD uh, software, uh, Fusion 360, and then I printed it again. And since here and there, uh, there was a support structure in the printing because this was the first layer, basically, uh, there was some material back uh, like remaining so I had to file that and it was not so nice uh, and also I decreased the height of this thing so now if I, I put this thing there uh, it will fit uh, 
So I will put it there, but this will not be a very spectacular experiment because I cannot really include everything in the, in the picture, but I will include all the screens and the, all the numbers. So I think that's more important just uh, uh, from the experiment uh, perspective. So that's what we got here. And uh, I will just put this somewhere in the corner here. And I did the fitting and all the calculations and it came out that actually this, if uh, we could believe that this can run at higher current than the specified current here, then the minimum uh, temperature would be at 3.4 uh, amperes. Uh, but I don't want to test that. So I conclude that uh, I will run this thing at 3 amperes and uh, we will see what uh, can we do with the uh, cooling performance. So basically we will run it at the maximum uh, specified performance and we will see what happens. But uh, what I will do is now I will assemble this. I will probably take a picture of it so you will see how it looks uh, but I will not take, uh, I will not make a video of it and then uh, in the future I will not use this, so I just keep this thing and uh, for the other uh, coolers I will just, I think I will put the foam on this. So I still have a lot of uh, leftover materials here, so I will cut out uh, four pieces and then I will clamp it uh, by using these nice rubber bands. So it will be, it will be something like this, but of course plus the foam so that we'll push down enough and insulate the rest of the edges. But uh, yeah, uh, this was not so successful. So what is left now is that uh, I have to connect the wires of the fan, which is placed on this thing, uh, to the same power supply as this, because all the fans are running uh, on 12 volts. So I will do that. I will check the connections again and that's all. And uh, I will not use any kind of clamping force because this is like half a kilogram of uh, metal and uh, that should be enough because it will be placed uh, vertically on top of this uh, surface. So that will be the only like force uh, between the surface of the thermoelectric cooler and the surface of this, but I, of course, when I put on it, uh, put on, uh, put on this, I will use some force, but uh, then I would only, I will only rely on the weight of this thing. But that 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 should be enough to provide good contact between the two surfaces. So I think that's all, and uh, then soon I will come back with the assembled system, and we will start our experiment. So this is the setup up and running. You can hear that the fans are running. There are three fans. So this fan here is the fan which is pulling the air from this direction and it goes there and it exits on the other side of this that you cannot see. But this is basically that uh, is the heat load for the cold side of the uh, thermoelectric cooler. And what you can see is that uh, this is the hot side and the outlet temperature of the cooler, not, not this part here up. And then this is the temperature of the cold side. So I managed to uh, put the end of the thermocouple on the cold side of the uh, Peltier cooler. So it is touching the top of the cold side, which means that we are directly measuring the a temperature there so we don't have to see what is the temperature inside the uh, heatsink and then of course this is just some time but here you can see the voltage which is currently uh, applied on the thermoelectric cooler and here you can see the current so uh, I'm running this thing at the maximum current basically as you can see and uh, at 3 volts we are at uh, 11, uh, sorry, at 3 amperes we are at 11 volts. So that's what we, we got here. That means that there is roughly 33 watts are passing through uh, this device, which is actually very close to the 
uh, Q max, which is the maximum uh, cooling power uh, described or defined by the manufacturers. So this is really the maximum of this uh, thing. And if I put my hand on the other side of this fan, where the supposedly cold air exists, uh, I can feel a slight breeze. Not too much, but uh, as you can see, the cold side temperature is 19 degrees, which is definitely lower than the room temperature by roughly 5 uh, degrees Celsius. So let's say I measure this point here with a infrared thermometer. It's at 28 degrees uh, Celsius, but uh, I don't know how much we can believe this, but uh, let's say it's roughly 5 to 10 degrees uh, Celsius difference as compared to the uh, as compared to the room temperature. But this device will not work if you want to cool your room. Of course, it uh, gives you like 90 degrees Celsius air on, on the uh, cooling side, but now uh, these uh, things, so the cooler of the hot side and the thing which let's say spreads the cold air from the cold side uh, is in the same volume so i mean they, they are in the same uh, room they are in the very same uh, area so here you of course emit warm air and here uh, on this side you are uh, cooling down the air but uh, basically these two things cancel out each other on the long run so what you should do is that you hide this somewhere else and how you can do that first of all you apply uh, water cooling because then you can use a very very small device uh, let me show it so this because basically what you can do is that uh, you have this water cooling block and you have your Peltier device attached to it and then this is the cold side so the, to the cold side you can attach this uh, uh, CPU cooler and then this can spread the uh, cold air in your room and then by using some very long uh, hoses you can uh, cool down the uh, air uh, sorry you can cool down the hot side of the uh, Peltier cooler somewhere else. So you, let's say, to this part, you come in with the cold uh, water, it goes inside this uh, metal structure, and then, of course, it will be warmed up because of the hot side of the Peltier, and then on the other side here, the warm uh, thing exists. Exits. So it leaves the uh, cooling block, and then it goes somewhere else let's say to another room and then you can use another block like this and on the one of the surface of the block you put a cpu cooler or maybe on both sides of this block you put a cpu cooler so in total you use two one on each side and then you cool down the hot or warm water inside this by using this another set of cpu cooler but for that you need a pump as well to uh, cool down uh, sorry to circulate the water so maybe at the end it's much more beneficial to just use a simple uh, CPU water cooling system that I've been using in my previous videos so you should try that as well and uh, then you can see what happens but uh, in this what I do here right now uh, you cannot use it as an AC and uh, the reason for that is just the cooling of the Peltier is in the same room where you try to achieve cooler temperature. It's like if you keep your fridge open, uh, let's say in the morning, and it will stay open and you keep it running, uh, the fridge will melt and all the things will be spoiled inside the, your fridge because uh, of course you are generating heat uh, with the compressor and you are generating heat uh, with basically the, the process itself to cool down the uh, gases inside the radiator of the of the fridge so that will not work and uh, that's why you basically separate the two volumes and uh, 
the radiator of the fridge is located outside and inside uh, in the insulated box you have your food in your fridge because uh, those are two separated volumes so you should do the same here maybe you can also do like uh, you get a big box of uh, water let's say in a insulated polystyrene box so there is no or very less heat transfer between the block uh, of water and the rest of the room and you put this uh, Pattier hot side cooler on that in that box and you have this part uh, the cooling part exposed and there, there uh, you can maybe have some uh, let's say air conditioner effect but uh, at the end of the day your box of water will be very warm and uh, as this uh, thing uh, just pumps the heat inside that water uh, it will just decrease the efficiency of that cooling so maybe after a few hours you will end up uh, reaching the maximum uh, temperature on the hot side or, or whatever so you never know but uh, with this thing uh, you can create a slight breeze and and you can see that uh, the hot side sorry the hot side temperature is roughly 29 degrees and uh, with the cold side you are 10 degrees below that so that that's a very nice uh, difference and I can feel sorry And, and I can feel that breeze, so it's very pleasant and uh, very nice, but uh, this will definitely not cool down your room, because b we are talking about 30 watts, and if you think about uh, commercial compressor-based AC units, then they are like 1000 or 2000 uh, watts of uh, cooling, so you will need a lot of this thing to cool down the room, but uh, to push some fresh air uh, into your face, th this can work. So if I just check some temperatures, yeah, it's it's roughly the same. So it's twenty one point nine degrees inside, and this is nineteen. Of course, I cannot uh, reach the same area. So what I was trying, I, I will show you with the other cooler. Uh, I don't know if it's visible, but here there is a copper plate inside. Uh, this is just not. So um, I was basically measuring the other side of this part uh, with the infrared uh, thermometer there. And uh, that was like 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, one other thing is that the surface of this thing, uh, the gray area, which is the heat sink, uh, or heat paste that is not the same as the surface area of the Pattier cooler so we are not utilizing the wall surface to the heat transfer or for the heat transfer and for other uh, stuff so maybe this temperature is now a bit uh, lower because if we would have been if if we were using this uh, wall area, then that means that there is a larger amount of heat transfer uh, because you are using larger uh, cross-section area. And uh, that means that uh, higher amount of heat is being transferred uh, from the bottom to the top. And therefore, uh, the Pattier cooler cannot reach that this low temperature because, of course, you are putting more heat load uh, on the top on the court side. So this is, this was the test for the TEC uh, 12703, so this is the 3 ampere unit and you can see that uh, it can go down to quite low temperatures if you are not using any type of uh, loads, uh, heat loads, but if you put a, let's say, significant uh, heat load on it, then the cold side cannot reach that uh, cold uh, temperatures. So here we are only at 19.3 degrees. So in the next uh, several videos, I will use different uh, Pattier coolers and I will check uh, exactly the same things with exactly the same uh, setup. And I will see what 
are the temperatures there. So at the end of the uh, series, we will have data for several different coolers, five if I remember correctly, and then there will be a comparison between them and you can decide uh, whether you can use it for your own project and if you can, how you can uh, utilize it. So see you in the next video.